Okay. That, that, that's that, yeah, that cable, that, t that telephone cable there. It's really got that down. Okay, the 15, I'm gonna run up there and get diesel first. Well, he gets the pressure on. Oh, that pole's about to go. There's old Loman. Look at that squirrel out up there. Yeah. <laughs> One fat old squirrel around here. <laughs> That'd probably help that tree to knock enough off with it. Yeah. You know who lives there, don't you? Uh-uh. That's where your police chief lives. I mean, uh, judge. Phil and Judy Sandy lives. Pole over. We stopped over and pulled the pole out of the road. That old butch. Mm -hmm. You get a picture of him going by? Okay, muffler shop. You see the red one before. Uh -huh. Maybe we'll okay. use this cabinet. Well, let's pull a couple of folders. Call and stand by. That might be the final blow. People's toilet. Oh, you're welcome. Well, you're welcome. Well, you're welcome. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> this is the baddest, hardest that we've ever seen in years. And the Lord's with us. He'll take care of us. Invite good people with open arms. In a video, you're not pushing the button. Right, and you can see the button. Yeah, but when I push that button in, these are people going to Scott Knowles gas station, needing gas for their vehicles. Of January the 30th, of 2009. These people are scared to death. They don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring, but I don't either.
Jason are doing a good job. To trust me, I told them. I told them I'd volunteer and cook. This is the major pole on South Douglas. This is Ohio Street in Spooneville. It looks a little bit better than what it did. Workers has out, been out cleaning it up. This is January the... No, this is... February the 1st, 2009. It really looked bad. But now it's starting to look just a little bit better. We got a lot of good workers out here. Just trying to give us a helping hand. Volunteer helpers. This is usually a little pretty little town off to itself right here. But it was looked pretty bad. But like I said, we got all these volunteer helpers helpers. I can't talk. It's been a long week. Sorry. This is Cindy Arnhart's house. She's a councilman at City Hall. We still have lines down here. This old tree's been here for a hundred years. Been here since I was a little girl. But it's hanging on. It's tough, like we are. Work together. We'll make it. With God's help. Still got some Mars down here. Well, they've really snapped. That's okay. We'll make it. Oh, shit. It's Palo Verde Street here in Malden. This is a beautiful little street over here. Nice trees wiped out. This is Bob Green's house. Dave Green, excuse me. Trees is always usually very pretty down through here. This street looks like we had a flood and just kind of wiped us out. There's 
like all the water is gone and just left everything behind. Actually, I guess it was water, ice. These are some guys from St. Louis come down to help. What? What? Oh, yeah, Mountain Dew water, Kathy. Okay, okay. Can you back the truck up in here? Back it up. Just back it up down here to them. Tell me now. This is this is our boss. And what's his Hello. name? Guru. This is Dean. This is Dean? Guru. Guru Dean. Hi, Dean. How are you this yeah, morning? I'm doing just fine. Good. How are you? This is our school cafeteria. Uh, they're feeding people that lost all their food and they can come here for shelter and get a warm meal. We appreciate the school very much for all their help. They've been taking care of everybody that uh, needs food and places to sleep. Here's one of our volunteers. She works at the school. She drives a school bus. But she's been here from day one helping us out. How's things going here in the kitchen? Oh, it's going great. Good. Everything, everybody's been fed and taken care of. That's right. We try to keep them all going. Y'all did a good job at it. Oh, I, we you. appreciate it. Believe me. Place to come and get a good hot meal. Oh, well, thank you very much. Come back here. Mr. Cook, he's been so good to the Board of Public Works and all these people in Malden, and we appreciate him very much. Thank you. Got anything you want to say? I'm tired. He's tired. <laughs> How about you? No. No? I'm okay with that. Tired? I've been tired since before it started. Yes. Okay. Oh, we're running and got stopped, so I Where are they at? Malden School. We're fixing to have a meeting going on here. Right, right, yeah. I'll, uh, they're going to coordinate that through me and Gary at the park map and CPA. I got to go through CPA and at the end of week's time, I've been coming up here, letting him know, and he's going back and helping the people. The 240 plug, two straight across, and then the brain. I can't find one of those. It's like they're all the four crops, but this is actually two that are straight across. Mm -hmm. We stopped at the Make, make, make me look good. I want to look like Harrison Doc Gaston. Put the pollen still hooked up and the circuits are hot. No, we're out You know what I mean? Yeah, right. 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 Yeah, Good morning, Stephen. How are you this morning? Doing good. Good. Y'all got the main man here sitting with y'all. He's taking care of us, feeding us. We appreciate it too, huh? Good. We couldn't get a bag of 
Okay, to bring you up to date, I guess, since yesterday. Uh, as of probably uh, 10 o'clock last night, we, we think we've made uh, a lot of progress uh, here in Malden. Uh, I went over that last night with, with Floyd, and the way things are looking, and with our crews coming in, and we're marking out the areas that we have got covered, we're looking at around 50, 50% plus. And, uh, and a lot of this probably Floyd can probably just say yes or no, but with uh, the crews that we just received from Minnesota that came in here about 9 o'clock, and we've got uh, underway about 5.30 this morning, we're hoping to be somewhere maybe 70% possibly. Floyd, would that, would that be about right, that we could get up to 70% today? If we're really lucky, we could, yes. Uh, as of right now, like I say, I, I have one of the new crews working on Circuit 6, which is devastated, that services, Palo Verde, Park area. Uh, we we uh, now have one of the new crews working in the alley on the uh, east side of Douglas behind Jackson's Laundry. It runs all the way out to the, the Boot Hill Youth Museum. Uh, there's not very much down there. I think they'll have that on within the hour and I'll be able to move them on out, uh, get them in the uh, Montgomery area out in that. And uh, then when we get through with that, we're going to try to get uh, one of the crews moved out to the gray area. Gray edition. If we can get the gray edition back on, why well, that'll, you know, those those little taps like that that you put on <coughs> adds up to a lot of people because they see more than you really think they do. But and then also, uh, you know, we've uh, Danny Butcher still out clearing a lot of areas for us. The areas that we're not we're not we've not got into doing a great job. Uh, we should have some other crews in here that's going to be doing some cutting, and so we're going to be doing a lot to try to other, assist other people after we get our work done. Uh, in the community. Some of the other things that uh, is going to be taking place is that uh, we have set up a control operating center within our office now. We have electricity so we can operate a little bit better. Uh, and I've uh, had uh, Brad French over here doing an excellent job assisting me in that. So we had a gentleman, Mike, uh, I'm trying to think. Mike Miller. Miller that uh, has assisted us, but he's not with us today or probably won't be with us again. And I really appreciate that, but we're setting up a control center to where we're going to be able to assist uh, the residents. Now we've got to start identifying a lot of our secondaries and uh, the services to those homes. Uh, we are going to assist them by getting back their uh, service to, from, the, from the meter to the house and that will be their mass and a lot of those are tore down. We are in the process of identifying that and we're going to be in the process of doing surveys. We are going to be bringing in some uh, te technical people on the electrical end, which will be electricians to assist us with those operations because we've got to do work orders on all this kind of stuff. We've got to deal with FEMA. Every bit of this that we're dealing with is uh, dealing with FEMA and the records and documentation is so, so important. Where every pole, every nut, bolt, everything we do out there that we're putting in this system, we have to document that by work orders, you know, with personnel. And we got to back all that up either with, inventory, with our inventory control pricing or invoicing. Every penny we spend, we're documenting that to this. I have been through two FEMA operations before with them and documentation. We do have a meeting uh, next Wednesday, I understand, at 1 o'clock in Kennett, Missouri. And at that time, they will give, be giving us a briefing. But it's so important, and they'll always tell you, the documentation and knowing what to do when these storms happen. I think we're prepared for, for that. Let's talk you right there just one second. Barbara, you're, I know yesterday you and I talked, and you were going to sit up, and you were going to get Patty, and you were going to start trying to pull that together. I think they had already Well, I, yeah, I started that. All right, I'm sorry. Go right in. Well, that's all right, but I'm just to bring up on that, uh, and like I, I, I said, uh, all the documentation we can, pictures are uh, underway, and they have pictures. been. And whatever FEMA do, wants to see pictures, the damaged areas. Uh, we're going to have pictures of our crew working. They're going to be seeing them, uh, putting up the lines. They're going to be seeing a lot of stuff. And once we get all this done, we're going to get into kicking into phase, we call it phase three or whatever you want to call it, and that's going to be the cleanup. 
Well, that is not our primary thing right now, but that still deals with FEMA. And right now we're doing a lot of that, and we're, we're getting some volunteer help to do that. Uh, at this, this time, we've got quite a bit of volunteer, but we need to document all this that we're getting and keep up with it. So uh, I can't emphasize that more than anything. While you're on the debris you thing, know, I mean, and I've had a lot of people ask where they can haul stuff and dump it, and I'm telling them to dump it at the curbside. I've had, I've had people, they already got their trucks loaded, they want to know if they can take it out to the east of town, and go out the air base and dump it, and I just tell them to put it right by the road. I mean, Danny, correct me if I'm wrong. That's by the alley or the curb. Yeah, I mean, the we're, don't we're do the eventually... Alleys. Glad don't I don't remember them again. <laughs> don't do alleys. We have a list we're calling on right now. We do. Any any assistance that you could to give to Brad over there, he, that's something he's working on. At this, at this time. We don't even know right now, do we? We have any idea how many how many we're going to have to replace? I mean, I know it's going to be no, a bunch. No, well, the survey's going to have to be done. Uh, I can tell you what these guys are seeing out there. We've got to get out in the field and start looking at things yeah. and documenting. I'm sure there's several hundred. At least in, in the section they're working on now. And see, I don't know if they're, if they're run. So many of them are not run. Some of them just pull loose and can be put back up. That's the key. Some of them are broke off at the mast and the wires are stripped out. In the section from the Madison Street to the railroad, you're looking at 28 of them off and down. Now, I, I have not been through there yet. Ward 1, you're probably looking at about 15 or 20. Half of those 15 or 20 are in derelict houses, which could just be cut off and not need to be replaced. And the house burned and you could have back up. If <laughs> you don't want to go there. Uh, Palo Verde and over there is all of that's underground. Bland and stuff over there. I did not see one but one meter base that was pulled off over there. So those parts. Floyd, your observation. You're out there all over this town, and you're seeing it all too. What does it look like to you? About what you what you're seeing? I'm not. You don't even know. <coughs> really, you're really. Uh, I'm going to say probably forest services down. I'm going to say 30 percent of the aerial services are on the ground. Uh, and that's just a, that's a conservative figure. And you got to understand, know. this is another phase of kicking in that we're we're, we're working on this right is now. Our primary up, get it the been a good area in, to us. and we're going to then we're going to deal with them. Many calls are going to be coming into our center, so city hall and everything needs to <coughs> sit it to the board of public we're works. We're concentrating on the wires that are still attached to the primary. Yes. The ones into the house, we're just putting back toward the house. Yes. So the ones that are hot. But this is hot. So God's yes. sake, tell us when this thing gets lit up. We will, and I coordinate that just again with Floyd over there. They will come in and report. And I do have a map down there that we had a 5.30 meeting this morning. <coughs> uh, started out with our people. <coughs> they came in and they identified on all the circuits where they, they got hot. So we'll know what is on. Floyd has, and then coordinated where he is sending his people in the other circuits that they're working. He's putting each team on the circuit. How many circuits we have totally based on the substation? Three uh, substations you got? We got uh, six of five. Six, six, five so he's trying to put teams out on all these and work these circuits. So if he want to know what to get in, it's just based on how, we, how much damage is there, how long it's going to take, and because they're working individual circuits. Is that transporter hot behind him? It's on the ground. You say we've got plenty? I've got orders in, and okay. anytime I need them, all I've got to do is just call and I get more and more and more. I've, okay. I've got plenty at the warehouse. Uh, if we want to use all 200s, I've got plenty of those. If we want to mix up and use both, I've got plenty either way. Okay. Most of the that's on the meter are basis. not bad. The hubs okay. are bad. Okay. And that, I've that got plenty of hubs. I've got, got on several maybe. boxes of two inch hubs. Okay. Uh, I want to mention about uh, generators. A lot of houses and homes have got <coughs> backup generator and they're hooking them in. We are going to be doing a survey of that. We want to know by going to house to house where are those generators and identify those. Because I say keep your generators, be prepared for the next 30 to 40, to 40 days. Uh, to have backup generation at your homes. 
Uh, but we want to know where those are at, and we're going to do inspections of those with code enforcement also to protect our people. We don't want no back feeds going into the system, and we want to see how those systems are being, being hooked up. So we will identify that, and we will address codes as, at, at some point here. Um, water system, you know, I can't say enough about that. You know, we're just very fortunate. Richard said uh, they're holding their own. You know, they're able to just try to keep up and to keep things going. And as uh, soon as we can get more of these areas in, it's going to help him on, especially the wastewater, keeping those pumps operating. At the, at the state. Anything you want to say? We need to try to get it out to have the people use as little water as possible because mm -hmm. they're over running us on the lift station. We're having to pump yeah. all this manually. Yeah. That's and right. you probably mentioned that under uh, Home Down Connection, we just had an interview yeah. with them. Um, if, if we could get people to work with us a little bit, you can't believe how much uh, wastewater they're using. Okay. I think that we need, uh, with public relations, uh, our city councilman is supposed to handle that. I have not been able to get back with mm -hmm. them to communicate that out there. Uh, he was supposed to work on all that kind of stuff, but we, we do need to get a better communication with our people. Uh, that's the same thing on energy. We want people to conserve. Do not take advantage. We uh, we just had three loads of uh, diesel in that just come in here the other night. So we're fixing to order three more loads. You know, that's about seven thousand something per tanker. So you got to understand that's pretty costly too. That's a gallon. Uh, this, I mean, diesel. Yeah. Did I say gallon? Diesel is about seven thousand gallons gallon. per tanker. Which that's exactly right. So um, we we got to get the word out. People can serve. Well, let me mention that we got 16 mags of generation. The city load uh, during full load that at this time of year is around nine mags. 16 and nine. We have more generation that will take care of this community than there. If we have a generator to go down, we have older generators that are the, the diesel units. We got three cats that sit down there. Those are the, the things that we really depend on, but now we're into about today, we're around four megs. We're about half of our load, uh, about half of it for this pound. So but we want to try and get people to conserve and not use them more than they have to. They still need to understand we're in a mode of just trying to keep the town in life. No need to okay. turn them off. Uh, Walmart, as of last night, went on their own generation Freezing jury saw the drop in the fire plant. Okay, that's what they, happened. Uh, that's, that's, that's part of our load that we don't have to worry about. We take that. Right? Those, those people are, are putting money out of their own pocket to help us, you know, carry the load, and, and they feel that they can insure their own electric that way, and it won't go off, you know. They got backup by the way, and they've got positive power, plus they can help us with the load, and we can give it to the, the general public out there if they need it. I'm writing some notes down about some of this stuff, and we'll send our little text cast out about conserving water and the lift station situation. And the reason it's water, that, but I'm wondering, as I'm listening to this, you know, we're still having trouble getting communication out. So, we have the capability here. Are we in a mode where we need to put out a public notice? We, that's because we, that's what we discussed three days but, ago. Uh, to that. Oh, okay. yeah. I think you may uh, want to work with your local paper. Uh, maybe they will assist us and, and help us uh, to do that. I put out an interview the other day right after the storm started with them. and But we need to be getting out all this other information. If I had, if, if I had print ready copy, I can put, I can get 5,000 copies out in two hours. Is the office capable of doing that? Uh, if you can get, you've got to make copies. you got the copies, oh, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, I can copy. If you can get it together, we'll I, get it distributed. You just, okay. I, I need, what I need, though, is somebody to cr create what needs to go out. Right. Yes, if yes. they will create, create a print-ready yeah. Word document or whatever, bring it up here, well, we got the equipment. We can do that. Okay. I got the paper, I got the equipment, yeah. not a problem. The only thing I would say about that, I mean, that's a great idea. It's just, it's just keep keep it as short as possible. You know, conserve water, conserve electricity, uh, be ready for a blackout. I mean, just short well, little things. Yeah. I mean, just, time Mayor, time I agree with you, but from dealing with school district and patrons yeah. and all that that yeah, I have to deal with, 
if you don't take it just a little bit further than that. Oh, I know. I'm not trying to say what it's about. I mean, you, you know, it, you, know it, you get too long. You reason. need to say, you know, like what I would say is like we need to, con you know, the Board of Public Works is, is, is respectfully requesting that the citizens of Malden can help us conserve water because at this time all of the lift stations in the sewer system is, are not functioning and they're having to be operated manually and, and we need your assistance. Then go to energy and say, because of the fact that, that we're operating under our own, our own power and fuel consumption at the power plant is directly related to how much energy that we're putting out, uh, we need everybody's help. And then, I, and then I would cite some examples like if you go into Walsh and Owens, you'll see that a lot of their lights are not on. If you come into the school, you'll see that a lot of our lights are not on. And we're all trying to help, and we'd ask that you only run what's absolutely necessary. You guys get a yeah, that's, that sounded great. You got your notes? Yeah, you got okay. it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and then we, that, and then what we'll do we is we back there. We get... Also, I would like for you to add into this for everyone to please be patient. We're, we're, you know, we're doing everything we can. I know we still have a lot of people out of lights, but it's getting to where I cannot drive down the road without somebody stopping me and won't know how long it's going to be before the light's going to be back on. You know, and, and I, I, I try to tell them, just look around and see the damage. You know, at least two days. Alberto, the park area, Booneville, you know, we've got tremendous damage in those areas. We're looking at least two days. These people are busting their yes. tails trying to get power back on. They're, they're working, they're doing a great job, but everybody is getting impatient. And, and you know, I, I'm sorry to say that, but it's getting aggravating for everybody to stop. You know, everybody stops and they want to know. We're trying, they're trying. They will get everyone back on as soon as possible. And I promise, that's all, that's all we can do. Please, oh, be patient. Do not touch any wire. Cable vision, electric wires. Don't. Whatever you do, keep kids away from. Keep them in the house. Keep them out of the yard. If the wires are down, don't touch the wire. Assume everything I'd like to add on that, Mr. Cook, if. Stay out of the utility crew's way. Give them, give them at least a hundred foot clearance, like in these small neighborhoods. Last night we worked. They were working on Edwards. It was getting pretty congested down there. So it's going to start getting to where we're going into shutting down blocks at a time. I would imagine, as far as through traffic, and then curfew is still in effect. If you don't have any business being out, legitimate business, don't be out. So and that's uh, six p.m. to six a.m. Yes. We're not really having a big foot traffic problem, though, so that's good. Uh, we, I mean, I'm <coughs> very pleased to get Our business is still going to close early. Uh, or what are, that's know, whatever y'all think. think. To, to, the, to the police force, the National I, Guard, how do you guys think you can handle? I think they could go to bit regular operation, but just don't go past 10 o'clock, but what, what I'd kind of like still. And I don't know, I mean, again, I think the doctor should dictate that anybody what you got to do, but I, I think that as far as the businesses, I think that can be kind of fluid with, with the chief, and he can say, you know, if you're talking to Walmart, if you're talking to, to Harps or, you know, or uh, Rhodes or any of them, you can sort of say, guys, you got to shut down or whatever situation. Yeah. It's it's road is, is the only light place Yeah, but I mean, I think you know better than anybody what's out there and what you, what you can handle. You're not right, so I'm not going to take a look at it. <laughs> Uh, anybody else? Mark. We got that runway open and we did get the Civil Air Patrol plane accessible yesterday. Are you still going up, Tom, and taking uh, aerial photos for everybody's benefit? Colonel Rice? We, we will have an air crew landing probably about 1030. They'll be bringing the photos in. So then we'll be bringing those people over here. We'll download the photos, get them to you all, SEMA, and everybody. Uh, initial load of the photos will be fast. Uh, tagging them that long will take us a while, but we'll stay here until it's done. Yeah, we have ground teams out this morning. We're down to four ground teams here. Uh, they're finishing up all the assignment. We figure the local area will be complete by, say, 2 p.m. And we are also going out now into the rural area. We're doing Highway J and Pit Pitman Road, was it? Yeah, straight out Pitman yeah. Road. We are running into down power lines and uh, uh, hard to get through on some of the road on Highway J. That's the current status for us. 
of our is that is I mean have you got do we know what we're doing here? I mean I, yeah, I, I talked, personally I talked saying, to Linda yesterday okay. she said the FEMA documentation is being handled with this uh, control center. They were needing additional photos, additional, you know, information volunteers. Yeah, and I just ask that you try to keep track of that. I mean I'm not if you did or you didn't it doesn't matter. I mean I guess if somebody is, but I Yeah, if they need me more than what Linda explained yesterday, yeah. you know, I'm I'm around. One thing that we do need, because I'm having to pull some of the people, is the uh, support that we're giving to our people in the field and that's um, water, uh, coffee, various things like that. And uh, has that been taken care of? So we have someone. Yes, it that, has. Okay. <coughs> so we got someone to take care of that now. I'll check in periodically. See okay. Something else that I need to do. Anybody else got anything they want to? We got those two twenty-five thousand uh, generators in, and had a little difficulty down there at BPW yesterday. But I still got a, I got another one in late last night. Yeah. Uh, Is that a JSA? I don't know. I, I gotta tell this story. It's, it's a big one on a trailer, but I mean, I I've got one setting somewhere. Does anybody need it? Plus the one that I'm trying to get somebody to kind of look at that what me, Danny, to be for the BPW where you can be able to run the whole office, I think. But if you don't have power, I don't know if we have power up yet. We've got power at this time, but we need that backup <coughs> because if, it, if something goes down, our operations center will still be functioning good. Are they still delivering their meals to out the fields to the people on that? We will if they have to. Uh, anybody else? Can we turn to our operation and sure. talk about what we need to do there? Yeah, and that's, that was next on my list. But oh, go ahead. sorry. No, that's fine. No, I mean, that's what I want to talk about. What we going to do? We can stay open, keep doing what we're doing as long as it's requested. Uh, we can continue the meals. We got tons of food. Yeah. I mean, food's not a problem. Uh, we got, in fact, uh, I was asked this morning how much we've bought, and I think we've bought bread and coffee. That's all we've bought so far. Between Wallace and Owens and them giving us all that food that thawed, and we was we had refrigeration so we could handle it, uh, plus the nutrition center and everything that came up from there. So, and and we've used some of our own food too, and we're all docu we're documenting all this stuff, by the way. And I don't know whether that ties in to it needs to come back to your direction, or if so how to how. The city yeah. You get reimbursed directly to the school, or the city does, then we can reimburse you, or some, some way. Or but uh, we've we've still got a number of people spent the night in here. Uh, I've got some of my employees that live outside the city that are spending the night in here too because they don't have anything. Uh, I, I think that some of the people that are spending the night here are, are not. Well, in fact, I know for sure some of the people who live outside city limits are spending the night here, but there's still a significant number of city residents, too, because I heard them talking about going to the house to see if I got power yet today, you know, whether we're going to stay tonight. I heard that discussion this morning. But as far as, let me get away from that and move over to food. Uh, is, is, is it going to continue to be a help to, to for us to fix these meals and... Uh, you know, I just say yes, yes to that to our support people as long as they're here. Uh, if we can identify, like especially our, our noon meals, you know, that, that's really been a help. Uh, and you just let it let us know. But, you know, to stay here all 24 hours or all the time, maybe we just have to cut, cut it down. But uh, I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know whether you want to keep that open just to serve them. If not, we've got other, other places to go. Well, Scott Wilson was telling me. He's, he thinks there's maybe about a dozen people staying here from Clarkville. That's probably. And, you know, I mean, we, we just run them off. I mean, I, I mean, that's one of those you play it by ear. I mean, you know, we had, you and I just very casually talked about maybe this might be the last day, at least for the overnight shelter, but I don't know that we're ready to do that. You know? Well, I mean, well I one thing we talked about is this morning is is maybe not closing up the, over, the overnight thing completely. Uh, just reducing it down, moving it out of the gymnasium into other parts of our building that's a little smaller, a little easier to handle. Uh, what you, have you got more people coming in, Tommy? We've got we've gotten the word out. Uh, we'll get a word today of how many we're going to have coming in. Hopefully, we'll get at least two more ground teams to go out. You know, my other question is, Ted, if you got more crews coming in, and you overrun the. Uh, our airport in and do you need we got cots now blankets and everything here we can set up areas in the school 
Uh, I know we've been feeding a lot of your crew, you know, and uh, police feed department. A lot of meal, period. I mean, and, and you know, that, I mean, one of the things that I have to do, I think, as superintendent of the school district, is my employees that I need to keep them coming in and coming to work. Right. And and uh, they feel like they're doing something by doing all this stuff, they you know, are, they, that they're contributing. They are. So what I would like to do is <clears throat> is keep the noon thing going until until the crews are done and everybody's back to where they can go home and. Or go downtown and eat a meal. Good. If that's, does everybody agree with that? That that's yes. a good thing to do. Could I? Could I maybe just add? Could maybe maybe? And, I, and it's not a big issue. Uh, we just go as we have for at least one more day. Be through today, maybe you through tomorrow. No, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to do. We're kind of playing this by ear, but I'm just saying, and find out if if Clarkton, does anybody know what the situation is down there? Now, I will they? tell you. I will tell you this. Now, this is what I've heard. I was, I, Called Michael, Michael Elder yesterday. You know, he works for Atkins. Yep. And just to touch base with him, and uh, he said he was a Clarkton at that time working on gas. And I guess they think they're going to have Clarkton up and running like yesterday evening or today. Okay. Uh, do they get Amber and UE electricity? I think that's what he told me. Yeah. And that they're they think they're going to be able to feed them. I know Gideon has set up their cafeteria to feed people. They have a FEMA generator. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much of that we're doing, but apparently some. Scott Wilson was telling me a while ago that he had just found a family this morning up on Stokeland that they hadn't had food in two days. And I mean, there may be some other issues there, but anyway, five people. And he took them some food and he was going to try to convince them to come down here and spend the day. Uh, I don't think it's a major problem. I just don't know when to say we're going to, you know, to close up. I don't think you turned anyone down. I don't care if you're a car. I don't either, but I mean, at some point in time. I mean, maybe you can consolidate it. I mean, can we just, let's just leave it as is until tomorrow morning. Maybe. I'd say we'll we just about evaluate it. this on a day by day yep. basis. Yep. The demand's going to dictate most of it, and Mr. Cook, well, just how, much, how great a need you have. Yeah, yeah. but we can always pair back and yeah. keep yeah. it open for the demand that we have. That's well, not the restaurants are open, the grocery stores are open, and the power is getting back on, so I mean that's going to take some of the pressure off as far as feeding people. Right. Right. So many of them not working, they have yeah, no money they got in. their money. Yeah, got their money. Yeah, the financial they stress is on them. Yeah. We just need to, I, I mean, I would say keep take care of whoever comes in. we yeah. got to take well, care of Well, and I think, and I think having, I agree. A, having a short place to get food for workers at the noon meal, don't you think there's an advantage to that? The noon meal. I, you're giving us by delivering meals to us. What you're actually doing, giving us another third of productivity there that day. That's what you're doing. You're going to have take out, feed them, go back, and everything. Yes, ma'am. I would like to get everything that we could possibly need in getting the uh, internet up. And everybody has been extremely helpful. The school. We're all going to have to go on diets, but <laughs> that's our fault. <laughs> I have just never had such a, and I've worked various missions, I have never had such great cooperation, and I do want to tell you how much we really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else? I mean, are we all kind of satisfied where we are, and we'll be back here again? Oops. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. Does anybody know anything about the Clarkton? I mean, not Clarkton, but uh, Campbell. Is it? Uh, I had a phone call yesterday from my daughter who lives over there. She's out on the truck. Uh, her neighbors had no idea. They're sitting there starving to death. I said, call them, tell them to get over here. We can, we can feed them. Uh, You're certainly welcome. How you get that word out, I do not know. Red Cross has been sending meals to Campbell. Okay. We told them we didn't need it here, but they're, they're going to make a place here, but they moved that to Campbell as their drop-off point Wonderful. for them. Wonderful. Do they have a place to stay over there? That I can't tell you. I think most of them are set up yeah. some sort of a shelter or something. The thing about Campbell, one of my janitors lives in Pickett, so he came through there yesterday. And he said there were some businesses were lit up yesterday as he came through. They're kind of isolated in, they, in their power plant. I don't know if they're even operating it anymore. I don't think so. Well, now this is just a rumor I heard coming up about some Campbell people was that power that they're using is out of their power plant. They couldn't get it started at first, and that they were able to get some generation out of it or something. Now, that's just a rumor. 
Well, it's I know they, they hadn't been operating in a long time, so they probably haven't tried to get it going. Well, all I can say is we'll help anybody we can, any way we can. And, uh, and like I say, we want to say that. I can talk to Don Collins, and he can just spread the word to Campbell, Clark, and whoever. I mean, if we're willing to stay open and help folks. I mean, if that's what we're wanting to do, and we can get the word out. There are that many people in you know, the rural areas need a place to sleep, hot meal. We, I think we're set up now. We could probably have got how many cots now? A couple of hundred? Or something. Close to three. And blankets. And, 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 you know, if I have to, we can feed them. How many did you pick up yesterday? 125, yeah. 250 more blankets. So, I mean, that, that's not an issue. Talk about generation. generation. 250 cots. We're, we're, we're running right 24 hours. Seven days a week, and I talked to the superintendent this morning. I said, "Do you need more help?" I've got two people in here from Farmington, Missouri, that is uh, working as operators from their power plants, but they're having to work seven, twelve-hour shifts in there. But I think he really needs more help, and I may have to tell him that I'm bringing in somebody else to help him. But we got to depend on that 30, 40 days. Jim, well, Mark Winkler, the regional SEMA director for us, is our area said right now that Malden was number one as far as being up and having everybody else enroll it. Hey, that's that one. Great. So, one other thing, though, we need to remember here, and from your perspective, the mayor and Ted, is Mullen's a hub for this whole area, Parliament Bernie. Yeah, you know, regardless, our trade area is 30,000, 40,000 people, and I think we need to think of that a little bit more in reference to that's our trade. Then the ones that trade with us come here, support us, and we need to remember that too. Sure. I say any, anything we can do, we will do. I mean, it's just you know, how do you get the word out? Or they need to get in contact with us. You know, if you hear any radio traffic or whatever, Jared, you know, something where you we need to. Uh, on a, if I can get one more thing, if I can get my email up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jim, you can get on the phone and get my email communication back up. I have direct contact with some people at KFES, but I need my email up to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to get some more, get better information to them than what they currently got. Yes. The, the better thing, I'm not the better, I mean, the big thing I think is, is still as the power comes <coughs> on, I don't, know where, I don't know where do we stand on cable TV. I have any idea. I don't have but I mean, I've talked to a lot of people have this network if they get power. Yeah, I've talked to the channel 12 a couple times, and, and, and you know, but I, I don't have any TV. I mean, no big I deal, went Airman. Online this morning and I went to KFPS. You say well, yours was on? I, yeah, I got power back, so I, I logged on. And there's very little mention of malls. It doesn't mention that they had an emergency I, center. They did on the news last night. They tell how bad it was. Well, they mentioned a lot of other towns, and even Kentucky and Illinois, but very little mention of malls. Well, they you know, came down what day was it? Uh, that's two or three days. One of them days they interviewed. I'm getting my email. I got a little tip off of that. Channel 8 right here. here for them. Well, I got a little ticked off last night when we was watching the news, evening news, and when they ran all these school districts closed to further notice. Well, they all, all those other school districts took my idea on that, and they didn't run us. And we, and I know Mr. Wilson called it in on their their line that we have called in. So I just got on my cell phone and I called 335-1212 and got the newsroom and I got a lady on there and I said, I'm gonna tell you, I'm superintendent of and I'm not very happy right at the moment because you didn't run that. Well, we and, were not even and, designated as a disaster. One of the cities that had been declared disaster. They mentioned a lot of other ones around here, you know, Sykeston and so on, but not, not us. Well, they, they've been notified, I can tell you. I've talked to them, you know. I did see it last night, Malden as a warming I know. center. I don't know what they said that. The gal interviewed Jarrett when she, when she was in Malden. I, I talked to her in the parking lot down there that day. She, I, I didn't called. see it. They said we had about 10 minutes, 5 and about that at 6. That, but I didn't see nothing. I mean, I don't, but anyway, I don't that's watch just, that. That's the whole little thing. It's part of life. Guys, we've done a good job. I, 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 I don't know what I've done, but anyway, you all have. I've sat around and kind of said, had a boy. And and those, <laughs> Did those eight generators show up or whatever they were? Don't know. That was a story I was going to tell very quickly. Old boy called me yesterday. Called Jim, called me, and he said, Do you need eight J8s or G8s or something? I said, Well, I don't know. What are these? And I don't know either. <laughs> he was with SEMA. You know, and I said, Well, I said, uh, Yeah, we'll take them. And he said, What are you going to do with them? And I said, well, I don't know. Them. What do they do? He said, I don't know either. And he said, But you got to tell me what you're going to use them for before we send them to you. <laughs> I said, uh, police, fire, sir, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. I said, send them on. They, they show up here. I don't know what we're going to get. We, made, <coughs> we got eight of them. Since I volunteered myself to this community, 
communication piece. I've got conserve water related to the sewer system. Conserve energy. Uh, please be patient. Do not touch any down wires. Uh, stay out of utility crews. Pass. Uh, curfew still in effect. Is there anything else that anybody else wants to be? How about something? Is it uh, anything doing with uh, the utilities and all that stuff? to call the Board of Public Works office. Emergency number. Yes. What is that number? 2238. 276-2238. Would it be <laughs> worthwhile to put in there to, that you can expect power outages? Um, something to that effect. That you can yes, expect that there will, that will be power outages. It won't be an yeah. interruption. There could be, a, yeah, an, an, an eruptions to be prepared for interruptions. Uh, and that we hope to have, uh, the, I'd say, 80 to 90 percent, 80 percent to 90 percent of the community on for well, this ploy. I just don't um, give them a time on that one. I mean, yeah. I think they're just asking Probably for just leave that long. Okay, let's just leave that alone. Because, I mean, they'll, then they'll, they'll, you they'll hold you, you to it. Yeah, they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll hold you, you to tell it. them, you know, you know, 4 o'clock next Thursday. By golly, 4 o'clock next Thursday, power better be on. Yeah. <laughs> Bart. Is the uh, laundromat's open in town? They are. They are? Because yeah, that's, right. that's starting to be a problem. So that, I just had that we yeah. talked about That's not a problem. <laughs> well, I was talking to uh, the Doug and Sally Dirks last night, and they mentioned, I don't know how you can get hold of these people, I said, I'd try to figure that one out, that during Katrina they had, uh, was, was it Tide or one of those companies? They had, had a yeah. whole mobile laundry truck? Yeah, they, I don't know, they've seen a bunch of ads that they show. I don't know. Yeah, who, they, no, I got Let's get them well, here. Well, they have a they have a facility in Cape. Proctor Gamble, yeah, they make tires. In that tire, they, 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 they make tires. Anyway, I'll call yeah. them. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. see yeah. if they can. Yep. Call y'all. Let me tell you where you guys live, Brad. I'm down to four or five Whoa. days. I don't know. Hey, people, I can't tell you how much I appreciate everybody. I cannot tell you how much I am so proud of what everybody has done. We've had almost no, I can't think of, you know, uh, an interruption as far as, you know, people not doing their job or as far as just citizens acting a fool. We hardly any of it. To my knowledge, we've had no major injuries, which I think is, is a miracle. Uh, and we're, and everybody stayed pretty calm. So let's just keep it up. We'll get it worked out. I just, I just got a phone call. Clark is about 100% up. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, we've got yeah. red water in here in the shelter. We have a guy at the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you want. Yeah. Run, yeah. But a lot of the rural people know. may not have them. Anything else? Right. I don't. Ted? Yes, sir? Before you leave, could you stop over here? Well, that's good, folks. Thank you. I, I mean, thank you. Huh? There ain't none down there at the fire station? Well, there was a bunch of them. Where's Charlie? You can get him from Charlie Cooper. He's got a bunch of them. Hey, as of Friday night, we are a federal Yeah, I do. It's 10 o'clock Friday night. Special report on Ice Storm 2009. I'm Bill Hampton uh, speaking with Ted Bellers, the uh, head of the Board of Public Works in Malden, and it is Sunday, day six of the Ice Storm. And uh, Ted, uh, give our viewers a uh, update on what's going on for Malden. Okay, well, I tell you, Bill, right now at this time, as you understand, that Malden is isolated uh, from any transmission and the power that uh, the city is receiving. You know, uh, Molden receives its energy from Southwestern Power, which is a 69 from out of Kennett through Piggott all the way to New Madrick. Well, those lines right now are down uh, in between those areas. They're, they're down for maybe 30 to 40 days before those lines will be up. They, in that period of time, the city is dependent on its own power generation. Right now, we have our town uh, running with our generating plant, and we're picking up loads and circuits as we can get these rebuilt. Uh, as of today, uh, starting probably Tuesday, after this storm started uh, Monday night, we started getting crews in here uh, from the city of uh, Macon, Missouri. We've got uh, also up in the north, we've got Kirkwood, and we got uh, a town uh, to the west, uh, and I'm trying to think Nixon. Uh, Nixon. 
And also, uh, as we speak, last night I got a, a four or five more crews in here from uh, Minnesota. They, they have arrived. We have probably about 50% of this community back. You know, it's totally down, no telling how many structures or poles all over town we've, we're out. But as at this time, we've got different circuits all the way to our airport that is covered and different other areas to the west, and we have some down into the east. Uh, we feel like probably by the end of this day, we're hoping to have somewhere like 70, 75% of our area up. But we get, the community has got to know that uh, we're dependent on our own generation at our own plant. Uh, anything could go wrong, so they've got to understand we don't have any other outside source of energy coming in here. Uh, Malden has been uh, uh, depending on transmission from the Southwestern Power Administration. Those lines are down, and uh, we're dependent on our own generation probably for the next 30 to 40 days. So uh, that's kind of about where we stand on, on the energy side. Someone with that electricity, we were called at the church and said, please turn your uh, major uh, breaker off, and uh, that way uh, whenever the power does come up, it doesn't create such a load. Is that, is that what we need to do? Well, that, that's correct. When we first started up our operations, we was trying to pick up smaller loads. You know, we're not used to being uh, really independent. A lot of our power has been balanced with Southwestern Power you know, over, over the years. But when we had to start bringing in this load, we had to make sure that we got those generators in that could take that load gradually. At this time, we're able to pick up more loads. Everything's smoothing out. It's operating well. And uh, I think the other night, we, uh, we got about three tankers of fuel in here. So we're, we're, right now, we got about 30-something thousand gallons. We're going to have another tanker coming in. But for the next uh, 30 or 40 days, we're going to be uh, running on diesel fuel uh, at our plant. Some of the areas that people need to be uh, familiar with and concerned, what we're fixing to do right now, we have been out in the areas doing a lot of clearing. Yes. Clearing this to get it, for our people to be able to get into these areas to get these lines up, and just hoping that people will uh, just not stay away from anything that's wires are down until we can come out there and clear that area. Uh, at this time, we got people out there doing that. Uh, after today, by tomorrow, we're going to have people start doing surveys and investigations in the area to find out what lines that we have down to the houses and the homes, meters tore away and mask. We're going to assist those people to get those back into service here in Malden uh, so they can get into service, but we've got to know where they're at. We'll be hoping that we'll get some through the telephone calls telling us that my neighbor's got power, but we'll go out and we'll check it and see that it's a problem with their service and we'll try to get it back in. Those are all secondary to what we're trying to do. We're trying to get our primary in. Then we're going to start trying to get the customers up that have problems with uh, meters tore away from their house, mask or service lines down. Uh, but we're hoping that, uh, that we're going to make some progress in the next week to try to take care of a lot of that. But when we can get this major area up, I think we'll have it up in the next three to four days, the major part uh, of Malden. And uh, then we will be taking care of the customers that are isolated in some bad areas that we can't hardly get to. Um, I don't know what else really I can tell you, but you know, uh, people in Malden has been very, very good uh, to us. We have a lot of people wanting to volunteer and help us out in any way they can. And we have a lot of volunteers out there supporting our, our community. So, uh, you know, we're very appreciative of that. Uh, we've had a lot of good support uh, from our from our city administration, police department, because we've had the National Guard in here assisting them. We've got civil patrol in here. We've got aerial being flown in this area right now, the damages. We're going to be dealing with uh, FEMA uh, here next week. We have a meeting in Kennett because this has been declared as a, a federal area. And uh, so we're going to be looking at to get some assistance financially on this deal here. And that'll be going to be taken, and a lot of cleaning up has got to be done in the next several two to three months. The community is going to be busy. Well, <clears throat> the cleanup is is uh, down the road. We're we're more interested in <clears throat> in, in getting the power restored, and we appreciate uh, the work that uh, you and your department, all the city is is doing. It seems like the community has really come together. Well, I tell you, I just think that Malden has been very fortunate uh, with the with the people. Uh, that we have working here. We've got some fantastic uh, staff within our electric department, our water department, police department, and all the departments working together, coordinating things, and it couldn't be any better. So, I mean, I have just been as pleased as I could ever be. I have been through two FEMA 
uh, dealing with FEMA in my 34 years working in the utility. So I've had a lot of experience and I have had a lot in the military dealing with logistics. So that has really helped out in our planning and making sure we take care of the people and take care of the people of Malden. So. We appreciate you. If, if, somebody, if somebody out there you spoke about uh, their neighbor might not have electricity and, and the other neighbor does, who would they call and what number would they call? Uh, it's 276-2238. Uh, call here at the Board of Public Works office and we will get someone out there and we will try to get you service as quick as we can. Okay. Okay. That's Ted Bellers, the, the uh, head of the Malden Board of Public Works, uh, telling our viewers out there what's going on. We really appreciate you. Okay. You sure are welcome. We're now speaking with Richard Blagg, the head of the water department for uh, Malden. And uh, Richard, how is the water situation for the city? Right now, we seem to have plenty of water. We've uh, gotten down past uh, 20 pounds of pressure, so we had to go in precautionary boil water order. Uh, but right now, we've got plenty of pressure and the water's up and everything seems to be doing well on that end. Okay, how, how uh, long do you think we'll be under the precautionary boil water order? Until we can get uh, three uh, good samples back from DNR, we've got to take them over the uh, Popper Bluff at the headquarters over there, then they send them to Jeff City, then we got to wait for results to come back from there. Have those samples been sent off yet? No, we couldn't take them till Monday. Uh, you got to take them in a 24-hour period where they can transform to uh, Jeff City. Okay. Any other uh, words for our residents out there? Uh, just uh, use everything with caution and, and don't uh, use any more water you have to preserve it because also the lift stations are uh, powers down to them. We're having to pump them manually uh, by diesel powered pumps. So uh, try to help us out all you can out there and, and don't uh, use any more water you can uh, have to and just conserve it as much as you can. Okay. It's Richard Blagg with the Water Department in Malden giving us an update and appreciate the work that you guys are doing for us. We're now speaking with uh, the EMA director of uh, Malden, uh, Jim Coburner. And Jim, tell us what's uh, going on in the city. Well, right now we have the city is a roughly 50% up right now. And hopefully by the end of day, which this is Sunday, uh, we'll be up 70%. And they expect within the next two or three, 80 days that Malden will be up 90%. But we're working off of the internal power plant that's located across the tracks here. And, of course, as long as we can keep it up and running, Malden's in good shape as far as that's going. If we lose the power plant, we're back to square one, Billy. Tell us about uh, the uh, shelter for the uh, folks here in Malden, uh, what, uh, what's happened at the school. Okay, at the school, we still have, we've still we got an ample supply of cots and blankets right now. We have uh, a little over 100 people staying in the gymnasium and probably another 30 or 40, uh, the Civil Air Patrol, and I know other people are staying at the school. So I'd say 150 people at the school. The school's feeding hot meals two days, I mean two times a day. They have usually a cold breakfast, which I know it was hot this morning, but they have a cold breakfast and hot lunch and hot supper. They're serving at 12 and 5 every day, and that is open to the community. There's no charge on any of the meals that's coming through the school. So if you need a place to get some warm food, that's the place to come. They have showers available. They're individual showers, so you can come in, take your showers. Uh, yeah, they're having the Super Bowl today. And they got, got TV there for the Super Bowl. They do have the TV set up, big wide, by 20 by 20. It's a big screen. So um, right now uh, I talked with the Mark Winkler, who is the EMA or the SEMA from CAPE. He's our regional director. And he said right now Malden was number one as far as coming back online. Again, that's strictly due to our power plant that we were able to uh, generate our own power. They're not expecting Malden to have power back from an outside source for three weeks, 30 days easily. Jim, you're all meeting uh, daily at 9 a.m. And uh, what, what is going on in the meetings? Who is, who is there and what do you talk about? Well, of course, the, uh, the mayor is, is conducting the meeting, but uh, the head of the power, uh, BPW, Board of Public Works, is there. Ted Bellers, uh, let's see... Uh, Floyd Mungle, who is the head of the electoral department in Malden, uh, Butch Burroughs is leading a cleanup team. They're going ahead of the electoral department in the alleys to make sure that they can come through and, and get everybody reattached. Well, uh, I, I know you guys have put in a lot of hours and you're doing a lot of things and you're doing a, as good a job as you can do with, with what you've got. And uh, our hats off to you for taking care of the folks. 
Well, the, of course, the chief of police is there at every meeting. We've had the National Guard in here, usually the uh, commander of the National Guard group that's here is in the meetings. Um, again, we uh, until we get our outside power source, and that looks to be anywhere from 20 to 30 days away, we will not have any schools in the city of Malden. There will be a two-day notification when schools will reopen. Other than that, if it had not been for the high schools stepping up as they had, we... I mean, they've really done a tremendous job there. So the superintendent of school, Ken Cook, has been in our meetings every day. Um, there's there's roughly 10 to 15 people in that meeting, Billy, and it's to try to pull out every name off the top of my head, it's not doing real good. Sure. That's understandable. Jim, appreciate you visiting with us. Jim Coburner with the emergency management uh, here in Malden. He's the director. Uh, giving you an update on uh, what's going on in this uh, terrible ice storm of 2009. Bill Hampton reporting for YHC.
And thousands of you are still dealing with the aftermath of Winter Storm 09. So KFBS 12 decided to team up with the American Red Cross to help our local chapters help you. And we've got live team coverage in southeast Missouri and southern Illinois. Let's begin with Crystal Britt, who's live in Malden. And Crystal, how are families coping there with the help of the Red Cross? Well, they're slowly but surely getting back to normal here. We do know that this is an area that folks like the Red Cross and the Salvation Army, it took a while for them to get here. So places like here, they had to rely on themselves for a while to get through. This is the Malden High School Commons where we are right now, where I'm told that they are serving their last warm meal. This has been serving as a shelter since last Thursday. They've been feeding hundreds of people, including utility crews. These guys right here are from Rochester, Minnesota. Soda. They're helping out with the efforts to get poles back up and get power restored. I'm told that power is restored in the Malden area, but the outside areas in the county, boy, they're still without power. Even the superintendent of schools here tells me that he doesn't have power yet either. I'm going to pull in here right now Phil Santi, who is a resident here in Malden and has benefited. Hi, Phil. Uh, just tell me just how much you've appreciated having this type of service. We know the school has really done a lot. Uh, Chris, it's been fantastic school and all the uh, citizens of Malden and all these people right here have, have put it all together. Uh, the mayor and the code and the uh, code enforcement officer and all the volunteers, the electric crew, the water and sewer, uh, the street department, and like I say, all these gentlemen and ladies sitting right here has made it work. And Malden's really come together. Yes, that we have. And uh, the school system has like, opened it up, and uh, we have been feeding individuals here. And it's just been it's been everyone. You know, not no certain people. Just everyone has worked together. Ninety nine percent of the of the citizens has been cooperative and it's just been fantastic really we, we know your story is just the tip of the iceberg and <laughs> yes, we'll talk to you a little bit later as well as other folks here Thank in you. Malden just one of many stories that continues to grow was in Malden today that's right, Jeff. Well, they're starting to regain some normalcy there. The city of Malden now has power, but many people living outside the town, in the count, or outside town in the county, that is, remain without power. Today, volunteers serve the very last warm meal at Malden High School. The school has served as a shelter for more than a week now, and it's really been more than just a shelter, more like a community center. People came there to watch the Super Bowl. They're there to just be anywhere but inside their cold, dark homes. The school superintendent tells me, barring anything else from happening, they do plan to open for school again on Wednesday. So the shelter will have to close. They will, though, continue to deliver meals to people in the county who can't get out. The Red Cross is now in town providing food and services. Here's how some folks there describe what it's been like. To me, it just makes us realize, you know, not to take stuff for granted. Everybody's helping everybody. It's a closeness. You know, it seemed like everybody is bonding, not just over in that area or that area. Everybody's, you know, coming together and we're getting to even know our neighbors. And we'll have much more from Malden coming up tonight at 6. Despite frustrations, people here had nothing but good things to say about the utility crews working around the clock to help restore power. Crews from miles away are here to help, including one crew from Rochester, Minnesota. Live coverage of Winter Storm 09. She joins us live from Poplar Bluff. And Crystal, what did you see as you made your way west? I'm sure a lot of what you saw, it, pretty much the same story all throughout the heartland. A lot of people without power, a lot of downed trees, of course, ice just everywhere. We're here, of course, in Poplar Bluff at the Black River Coliseum, which has turned into home away from home for the time being for about 450 people. Hundreds here right now taking advantage of the generosity, many eating dinner at this point, and, of course, enjoying the warmth of this shelter. Many shelters like this, of course, set up all across the heartland. We drove through Stoddard County today where there are seven shelters set up right now in that area. Of course, the main issue there, as many other places right now, is the lack of power. In Dexter, emergent ma emergency management workers tell me that it's going to be seven to nine days before the lights are likely back on there. On our drive on Highway 25 between Dexter and Bernie, we saw a number of Ameren UE crews out working 
seemingly the endless job of repairing lines. Some towns not only face continued power issues, but also water shortages, as you many, many of you know. I'm told that that's a problem in places like Bernie tonight. Let's look now at some video from Malden, Missouri. The National Guard is on hand right now. Soldiers from St. Louis, Kennett, Jackson, and Cape Girardeau are working with the local police department, helping to evacuate people to shelters. They're also helping to patrol the area, keeping a lookout for looters and people breaking curfew. That curfew, by the way, is from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. They're also helping today as the Walmart, which had power, lost it this afternoon. They had to help evacuate the building. Pretty chaotic scene there. Here's more of what crews are dealing with in the Malden area. Every major tree is gone. All the power lines are gone. And... Um we're just holding on by God's good graces. Nobody's being hurt, and that's what we're holding on to, that we can keep some uh, some control on a bad situation. This is the most ice I've seen in uh, southeast Missouri in, in my career. And, uh, you know, we, we just got back from a, a hurricane deployment, and it's a pretty similar feeling with, uh, you know, you see this mass devastation, and, and, you know, we're just trying to help out however we can. And no major damage or injuries, fortunately, to report in the Malden area. I'm told that right now that they're looking at about 7 to 10 days before power is restored. Quickly back here in Poplar Bluff, I'm told that about a third of the city is without power still. And about 50% of the county here in, in Butler County, they, they have power in about 50% of the area. They are making progress, of course. They continue to run into problems as trees continue to fall. But again, the Coliseum here, they want to let folks know that it is open and if folks Folks know people who need a ride to get here. They can contact the fire department and they'll bring them here. Jeff, back to you. Crystal, thank you. Crews across the